I grew up in a family that was very, like I said, hippie, social justice oriented. You know, my mom's friends were like ex Black Panthers, and they would be like Black Panthers at the at the you know Thanksgiving, and um, you know we would be at ashrams, and we would go to the you know multicultural. Um, you know, anti-oppressor rallies and stuff like that. You know, this is Bay Area culture, right? Like counterculture stuff in the, you know. So I always also grew up with like a sense of, of um, a sense of like fight for our culture, right? And, um, and independence, right? Um, and so, when I came across this as an opportunity, what I saw was the Koreans are eating off of us and not giving anything back. The stylists in the black community are, they have all of this, un, un, um, all of this potential energy and, and unlocked uh, up potential because they've got all these customers, they're experts at what they do, people do what they tell them to do, the customers do what they tell them to do, they just don't have the tools to unlock that, that potential. And if I build this, there is an opportunity to both make a big ass business that can make a lot of money and to transfer a whole bunch of money into the black community. And so those two things, together was like that's it that's what i'm doing fuck it that's what i'm doing that's the best of both worlds you know um and so um yeah and so that just lit me up yeah and then and then i was right for that business i had the skill set and i had the experience and the background to be one of the only people that could do that that's true. And, and I was about to go there. So I'm glad you yeah. said that. you yeah. technically in this space, yeah. you're one of the only people who were positioned yeah. to do it. Yeah. You had experience in import export. You yeah. had experience, obviously, you yeah. understand the African American community. Exactly. Incredible. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, I, uh, I had a, uh, go, go, um, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say on that same point, you know, like uh, Steve Stout invested in Maven early on, and um, I remember like pitching it to him, and uh, I was telling him what we were doing. We had kind of already got things rolling, and um, he was like, "Wait, wait, wait! Why isn't anybody doing this already?" And I said, "Who's gonna do it?" And he was just like. Okay, meet me tomorrow morning <laughs> at the battery. Let's 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 dig in, uh, and that really was a big part of it. Like the 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 intersection of all the different skill sets you would need to pull this off is just a rare set of traits, and I had those. And so, when you also when you have an advantage at something, you gotta du you double down, you go hard, you press an advantage. And um, and I did know that at the time. I was like, okay. And so I just, I just, and I started pushing on that. Okay, talk to me now about funding. Early funding, and then I want to work my way into Silicon Valley. Okay, so when I started coming up with that idea, I was, I had called Kali and I had told her, and she was like, D, you got to do that. If you do that, I'll, I'll, I'll invest. I got 10K for you. I was like, oh shit, okay. Black um, woman. Black woman. First investor. First investor in Maven. Black woman. There you go. Um, and then she tells her friend, who was like one of her best friends, and I know her as well. And then she pops up and she's like, yo, if Kylie's doing it, I want to do it. I want in. I want in. And I was like, all right, cool. Wait till I get uh, like a real VC in. And then you guys just kind of come like, 
I don't want to like take the money and I don't have the rest of it. Right. Um, you know, cause when you take money from friends, you're trying to be extra careful, right? You're like more nervous. Right. So I end up finding this other guy who a VC who tells me, all right, if you go raise $40,000, I'll match you. And uh, so then I go back to Colin and I'm like, yo, I got to do, all I got to do is pull together like 40. They put up their 20. Um, another black guy, like not entrepreneur, uh, he was an engineer at uh, Zynga that I had met during this time. And during this time, I'm just like running around, going to as many tech events as I can, trying to learn, you know, the language and and try to understand how to pitch. And he ends up saying he wants to give me 15 grand and he's about to do it. But then the Zynga IPO gets fucked up and he's like, fuck, I can't do it. But then he calls me the next day and he's like, I told my mom about your company. And she wants to give you 15 grand. I've never even met her. But these are all like black women that when they were presented with this said, we need this. We need this in our community. We're tired. We're tired of giving all the money to somebody else. We need it in our community. And they put the money up. And they put the money up. Um, and then one other dude that I had met, another brother who uh, was out here, introduced me to some, this, this white dude named Adam Glickman out of, out of Fuddruckers. And Adam was like, uh, this is cool, I'll give you 20 grand. And that was how we got, um, I think it was 48, the first $48,000. So then I go back to the dude, the VC, and I'm like, yo, I got the money. And then he's like, well, tell me about your numbers some more. I'm like, wait, what? That's not, like, why are you asking me? You, you said if I get the bag, you're going you're gonna to match it, whatever. And he's like, uh, okay. You know, so basically he tries to pull out. And I'm like, yo, you can't pull out because I just told everybody. And, he, and he's like, okay, fine. Well, I'll send you $3,000. And then he never sends the $3,000. He just never sends it. And I go back to everybody and I'm like, yo, I thought this guy was gonna come, and but he didn't. And everybody was just like, take the money and go. Just run it. And that was 48 grand that um that got us started. And I bought some inventory and um, you know, built the built out the first website and little MVP prototype, um, and was starting to move product and then during that time, I was going to pitch events and I would pitch and I, I, was, I was really good at pitching, but all the panelists afterwards would say, like, I, I would win the pitch event, but then the panelists would be like, this is amazing, sounds amazing, um, but I don't know anything about black women or hair or anything, so like, I can't invest. And that was happening over and over again, but eventually, one of those panelists said, let me introduce you to this guy who runs this accelerator called 500 Startups. Um, and an accelerator is where they'll take like a company with an idea. They'll give you like 50K and some office space. And they'll help you introduce you to investors and help you work on your pitch and help you with the product and basically try to accelerate you to, to getting funded. And so... By the time we got into that, there was $6,000 left of the $48,000. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.